Well, actually, when I watch it as a spectator, I just see these stories like, wow, I connect to each and every one, and, and, and like, to myself even, you know, it's like, wow, um, we're real human beings, we go through struggles, we have our own pains, we have common now, we share common ground, we share some differences, and at the end of the day, we're all human beings, and that's, I think, one of the most important things about this documentary to me, is that people can get to see, it doesn't matter what we kind of look like, I think, I think people, when they watch it, they kind of start thinking about their own preconceived notions about what a thing is, or, or art, or should be, or, no, I don't, I don't really get that one, but I really get that one, like, they almost, like, in a way where it's like, there's a, a hesitance there, or a stigma there, it's like, well, you know, I mean, even if you're not like this one, look in their story and to see how you actually share a lot in common with them. You know, I had a friend who watched the documentary, she said to me, you know, I had a hard, I initially had a hard time relating with Carlos in the show because I had this, like, stigma about what a show is, and it's like, I, I couldn't see him as a human being. But once I let that go, I was able to see his story and have a scene with him. You know, that's the kind of thing that I, I think is one of the most important things in this documentary is for people to really see, well, one, to finally see a, a story of a, gay, of a gay Latino, right? And then three different ones. And, and obviously, the three of us don't even, we don't even represent the full diversity of the community, but at least to something. And I think that that's probably the most, the most important thing. Yeah. Jonathan, you want to in terms of the game, the experience, um, the, the challenges that you face coming out, be it as a Latino, be it from the religious perspective, so, what is your situation like this? Hey everyone, I'm Jonathan. Uh, I don't come out on the screen, so I'm the director of the film. Um, my inspiration is um, with my own family and the difficulties that I experienced with my parents in coming out to them and the hardships that it caused me and them and the disruption um, to our family, you know? So I think this happens every day. And I wanted, and in, in my search for finding, you know, role models and solutions out in the world, um, led me to <coughs> representations of, of other people that weren't myself. I didn't find movies about Latinos. I didn't see, you know, news articles. I, I found Bienestar. I'm going to feature in the film, so um, there's a lot of uh, struggle, I think, as Latinos that we don't um, talk about, and there's, there's enough representation in the media, so I wanted to create a film um, about it. I found 67 films um, in my bachelor's um, undergraduate research work um, that were produced about the Latinos, but they never made it to film festivals. They were usually low budget. Um, they were university produced. Um, this is the work that I did as an undergraduate because I wanted to find a way to tell our stories and there isn't financing, you know, there wasn't financing out in the world as much as, um, actually there is financing for films and for a lot of Latinos and that's the sad story. Not just Latinos, but people of color. So I wanted to make that happen. I fundraised, como los buenos Latinos that we are, you know, um, we got together and we fundraised money to make this possible. I know how to throw real good parties. And so I basically do parties and a fundraise money for this. And this is possible because of the community, because of the family structure. And so I answered more than your question. I told you about the history, but my desire was to see myself on screen, not just me physically, but some sort of Latino and, and mobilize it because the world needs to see more Latinos. We are in the world, but we're misrepresented. We, um, the media constructs us in a way that is um, you know, stigmatizing and and it reconstructs these negative views of us sometimes and we need to begin to take control of those and narrate our stories so that we can have proper representation and the only way we can do that is by picking up a camera and shooting and telling our stories authentically so. uh, my name is mario devo i'm the producer of the film um i think hearing him talk right now it was like I don't think I've ever told this story, but uh, we're fellows of a, of a film organization here, and we met. We talked about what he was doing, and he gave me that same exact pitch yeah. about what the story is, was about, what it meant to him. Um, that I didn't want to take on a gay project. I, I'm a filmmaker. I didn't. I didn't identify. Uh, I'm, I'm a gay man, but I didn't identify with my career or my profession in that way. And 
to even consider it, I, I thought maybe I could do this something on the weekend, um, sort of behind the scenes, not being really involved. But yeah, on the down though. <laughs> but the more I got to hear what Jonathan was, was bringing to the table and then getting to meet um, the three guys, and, uh, it became this, this, this strong force. And uh, I, I looked in the mirror and I was like, well, just do it. Just move forward with this. Um, don't be embarrassed by it. You're still a filmmaker. You're creating something that will mean something to people that people will identify with. And that was the catalyst. And since that time um, and, and finishing the film, I all of my work is now LGBT Latino oriented. Um, so I'm a proud filmmaker uh, fulfilling a need that is in our community and taking up that, you know, picking up the camera and telling those stories that um, they are not visible out there, especially for people of color. You guys, um, I'm, I'm, you decided to do this by Where were you guys at personally? In terms of acceptance, in terms of that dialogue with your family, how, where were you at and how did this, did this kind of guide your process? Did this uh, change you? <laughs> um, at the time, we saw the film that I wasn't out to my mom, but she she had known for a long time. She had been waiting for me to like tell her, um, and that, and I think that it was really important for me to tell her because what I realized is that me not I mean, it's that she never gave any indication that she would be accepted. I mean, she was I, I knew she would. But there was for whatever reason I was just hesitant. My own answer late me. And what I realized that when I did tell her, I was like, wow, it just it opened so many doors. We felt we became a lot closer instantly because it meant that I wasn't hiding. I wasn't keeping something from, you know, from her. And it was, we were able to, we were to bond again. I was able to share things because little things like when I went out with so and so to this place, you know, tell her, you know, it's, like it's, it's little, but it's actually really a lot. It adds up to a lot. And, and it just became, you know, it was awesome to be able to, be able to do that. In fact, when we, you know, with the point, to the point where I was able to come out to the rest of my family. Um, my cousins are all, they all, they're all people, obviously. My uncles, I think, everyone was actually I have a pretty accepted family. Um, to the, the LA premiere, this, this first premiere in LA, um, my grandmother showed up and she was grandma, aunts, uncles, um, great uncle, you know, it was a lot, it was beautiful. And who was holding myself? No one else was holding me back. Where I am now, I mean, I just feel a lot of proud, still a lot of much better place. And I worked in LP presentations, looking at the years and I've been hearing a lot of stories about acceptance, and so it really helped me just be at the place where I am now and really be fully accepted myself. Of course, as close to that as possible, because obviously we grew up in a really heterophobic society, and I think, and I don't know if I'm not in just in general, it's a little bit homophobic. As for me, uh, at that moment, uh, when I started doing the documentary, I was going through a drug addiction problem. Um, but I was trying to like escape from the problems at the same time because uh, X reasons my parents kicked me out of the house. I got stabbed by my brother for coming out. Uh, my friends, my, uh, my straight friends, were like turning their back against me because they didn't like my dominant sexual orientation. It was hard. It was a hard journey, but thanks to God and John, I was just thanking him, you know, because if it wasn't for him um, trying to push me, trying to motivate me to, like, speak up and get the sentence message out there, you know, like, uh, I think I would have been a cracker in the alley or something, obviously, because I was really hardcore in my book. Like, you name it, I've done it. Um, now, I really thank God because I, like, overcome that stuff. I'm working as a medical assistant, but that's since 2006, I actually been a medical assistant. Um, I stopped doing drugs. Uh, I talked to my friends. Um, I had a good relationship with my father, uh, which I didn't before because he was just like Mexican much or like, you know, like, I don't like, excuse the word, but I don't like facts and all facts should die and all the, all the stuff that he would tell me growing up, you know. And then I actually, this past year, I started creating a good relationship with my brother again. We're actually communicating. I gave him, yeah, I gave him. 
I just thank God for everything. It's just so that it's good. Three five years, you know, so just watching us, watching our progress, and I guess our experience of playing this community so it's a good reminder that we continue to grow as community. So I think personally, I feel that I mean, it's a little too ranch. Like, and, and, and even, even with this, like, this bus that has here, I was like, I still have the bus that has here, you know? But, you know, yeah, it's that. It's definitely one, I still own um, my puteria, my hoteria, you know? I, I think if anything, I've grown conscious. That's something that I didn't have the privilege to grow. Like, I never, I saw myself organizing as a necessity because we live in this fucked up system and nobody else is going to do it for us. So that was my necessity. I didn't just organize for get paid. And I think like my story of like people that were impacted by TV, for example. I mean, like, people if, and where I grew up in Coachella, they weren't getting resources, you know, and, and then getting connected to the start to actually stepping out, you know, the nonprofit world and then organizing, direct organizing for my community. That's something that I praise and I'm really happy that this destiny, this journey is ongoing because I don't know where I would be. Which nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's it's a beautiful journey and it's full of um, you know new desires. I just went back to my home country to Mexico, so like even closing and opening family doors that didn't exist because misplacement because shit happened, you know. I feel that that's it's allowed me to grow deeper, deeper connections with my family. Deeper connections with my relationships. I'm always like looking for love somewhere else and like, I'm in love with myself, you know. I'm a little hoochie dating. <laughs> but that's a relationship too. It is it criminalizes, right? That the monogamy is if it works, but there's other other ancient cultures right there, you know, like and, and I embrace that. I love that about me. I love that um, I'm loving my sex life, my love life with myself. Healing also, healing with <laughs> with um, being incarcerated. You know, like I don't think I shared that I I was in detention for three months. You know, and and that has taken me back a lot of organizing, a lot of even working. It's difficult for me to come back and relive those traumas. You know, but it's a reality. It's a reality, and and I'm I'm really happy to be back in LA. I was living in the Bay for three years. You know, so um, yeah. Excuse me. Did you ever figure out a way that you could go to school? You mentioned it a couple times. I mean, there are ways for sure, but um, when I think about opportunity, and I'm a little old, I'm 28 now, that was when I was 22. <laughs> 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 right, the system doesn't work for a lot of people. And I say because it's the current policy that you know, cater to a certain population. And with immigration, like, I could go on and on, you know, but it goes back to privilege. To economical status, you know, if you don't have money to go to school, like now that I didn't even finish my community college, it's going to be twice as difficult. I don't, you know, I'm working right now, like little gigs. So for me to pay rent continues to be like a struggle, you know, and then rent is not the cheapest here in LA, you know, so that's a reality, you know. So yeah, I always encourage young people, like my friend Dorothy, who's also uh, being involved with my work, you know, like he has more chances, but that doesn't limit myself to actually get education. I'm actually getting published. So what are the questions we have uh, in the other text? Hi everyone, my name is Jose. So I have a question. <coughs> Watching this movie, so I was born and raised in Chokan, so I'm Mexican. I crossed over twice because, you know, we get caught the first time. <laughs> um, but when I was looking at this movie, um, I do have some friends who I could relate. Like, I never remember feeling um, the same emotions I was feeling today, but I couldn't personally relate. And then I was, I continued to think about how there's this Latin community that's really separated and nice, in LA especially. So I live in West Hollywood. I have no idea how I ended up there. I don't even think I really knew how I ended up there. Um, but I do not cross, right? So like the Eagle, um, Silver Lake, 
um, oh, man develop, I don't go that side of, I just don't go cross that, right? It doesn't mean that I do not like it, it doesn't mean I don't care for it, this is nothing to relate. Um, so I feel like there is a division be between Mexicans or Latinos. Um, if you live in this side of, the, of this side of this, whatever, boulevard, and this side, you do not connect. So my question to you is, how can we raise, how can we close the gap between people in the other side, in my side, right? I live in West, I'm not even legalized fully, right? So I live in this side, even in that side, how can we connect and deal with the issues that we have? Because I relate, all those issues that I relate, they're different and they play a different part, but we are the same, and we're struggling the same. So how can we close the gap as a, as a gay Latino community? Make movies. <laughs> Tell stories. Um, be involved in activism and policy making. Uh, being involved in, in community organizing between you know, different sides of the city. Um, being involved politically. Um, being an artist. All of those things are very prevalent. They do move the dialogue oh. forward, um, especially when they touch on social Any opportunity that we have as Latinos to represent our own personal story, our family story, I think that that really shifts the consciousness. Um, and I would hope that we've done that with this one. Um, I'll let the other guy share with you. I'm make you ask where you're coming from. Ah, man. <laughs> I want to give you guys a chance to talk. I feel that we all have to embrace and I think that uh, the way that I see Mexico when I grew up or when I grew up in LA, I saw it completely different now and a different lens. I feel that particularly why gay men have the privilege to live in West Hollywood and it caters to a very whitewashed uh, Latino community. And when we speak about that privilege on its own, is that, you know, like, well, you don't see a lot of trans women, you don't see a lot of lesbians living in Mexico. So that's something that we have to be in mind. And with that said, it's speaking about that privilege that exists, right? That when you think about who benefits from West Hollywood aside from the corporations and the drinks and all of that, you know, like we challenge each other to open up. I guess like I have the privilege to be there, but I also have community. And how do we connect to that community? Like getting involved, like what's in the other side, what's in the east side, you know, and and you know what's happening there. You know, why do we have gang injunctions in the city, you know? And, what are we criminalizing, you know, like, why don't we have more bars from a gay lesbian center, for example, right? Like, resources are very, like, shifted to where the rich people are, mm -hmm. and we continue to be poor, you know? So that's something that we need to take into account, right? And that doesn't mean that we need to invest in those communities, because those communities have been consistent, and they have been investing in their own, uh, you know, like, resources. So being more intentional, right? Like, collaborations, and like you said, like, culturally, like, getting connected to each other, like, I was, speak, I was speaking about mentors, you know, like I think like for young folks, like we are in lack of mentors, particularly Latino mentors. So if you're a little on the other side of 40, you know, like we the mentors, you know, like we yeah. and, and, and like teach us everything, you know, we, like the fact that you're alive, that means like, you, you know, like there's a history right like there, you know, so in many more ways. <laughs>
Um, I just wanted to answer that because I, I was inspired by all the comments. Um, I was in Santa Cruz getting my master's for two years, and Santa Cruz is a bubble, you know, so everyone describes uh, bubbles, and I think West Hollywood is definitely a bubble of its own, right? And so bubbles exist, and it's like clicky, and you know, um, I think that it's important that was not important. That one of my one of my recommendations, if you want to be able to reach out, to connect, to do something, um, to to connect to that community, to our community, is um, yeah, to support projects like these. You know, like I, the film is good. Um, I don't think it's the best, but like money to be able to make. It. So being able to finance other projects that tell our stories authentically. If you have those connections, if you have friends who can finance these films. If, um, you know, so that's that's my response to help and to find filmmakers that you can um, help out. You know, so the mentor. You know, so find key people and help them with your story. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. John, and then one of the most beautiful elements of this film, in addition to the stories, was the cultural backdrop that you integrated with the gentleman and the regalia and the dialogue. My question to you and to the panel is: When you guys watch that. How do you relate to your cultural heritage as a gay, as a female? <laughs> I actually, uh, it, you will find interesting that the poetry comes from a female person that is just in the Vegas, and I actually, uh, I work with them, you know, I do my writing and my poetry. So to see the words lift in somebody else's voice and to see, like, Indigenous connection was beautiful because he identifies himself as somebody that is indigenous from the ghetto. So it took me back to, to recently, like opening up my culture, like my cultural background. And going back and actually meeting and being in those places, it was a really good thing. It was a energizing, and, and that's it shows resistance. And I think that throughout the Americas, you know, and, and different parts of the world, you know, like, our indigenous ancestors are everything, and that's something that I have truly rooted in myself. So, I grew up in LA, and the history of, of LA is that this used to be Mexico, and Mexico used to be indigenous, and so our roots go back to a history of um, colonization. So, who am I in this land? Who am I as a person? What is my story? Who where I come from? Well, it's a history of migration. I came here at Colombiano. So I don't identify with that actual, you know, the regalia, but there is that on the land that I come from. So going back as deep as I could into my identity, I wanted to be able to um, connect to this, who am I, you know? Um, I could have gone, you know, and told the story in so many different ways, you know, but well, why, why this? Because I'm from LA, and then the other people, we are too, we are too spirited. We are, we are beautiful healers, and so we forget that. People, people don't know that. They're not aware of how powerful we are. You know, and we forget that as queer Latinas, we or we don't forget that we need to remember. And in my connect, reconnecting, um, I realized that I have the power to be able to transform my family. And I'm still on that journey. You know, it's a spiritual journey. It's about self. It's about consciousness. It's about really understanding who you are and why you are the way you are. And so my parents are here in the back. Comfortable. So I mean, for me to see them, you know. Here, that's part of my journey is to be here sitting down as a Latino filmmaker who produced a film that's making its way through film festivals across the country and, love, and traveling to university. So it's a spiritual journey of awakening, of, of awareness, of healing. And I'm still healing. I'm still struggling. Um, but that's life. You know, all of us are, are doing that. So thank you for asking that question. <laughs> After working on this project and kind of on your own personal journey, as you said, it's been five years since you did the full filming and everything and definitely rising to this moment. In what ways have you contributed to um, your own convenience and kind of inspired others after what you've experienced? How have they kind of embraced this new chapter of your journey? Right there, look. So, as I was talking about earlier, this, this film set me on my own 
filmmaking journey, um, I made a really strong choice to produce work that had to do with L the LGBT community specifically. So um, that led to The Baby Cries, which is a story about two dads raising a daughter. Um, that led to LA Queer History, which is showing tomorrow here in Hollywood. Um, uh, you know, two Latino filmmakers telling the, the LA LGBT story uh, from the late 1800s to, to present day um, to lead to a, a new documentary about Jose Cesaria, who was the first uh, gay person to run for political office in 1961. Those are the things that, as a filmmaker, I know that I can make an impact in, in our society. Um, and we live in such a digital world that um, it's not just something that's going to happen in a room like this, but it's going to happen online. And people are going to talk about it. And it's going to transcend borders. So in that way, I know that in my own way, I can make that difference. <laughs> I guess, um, as you saw, like I was doing um, a walk across the country. Uh, for, uh, what we were fighting back then, it was uh, stopping the protections of young uh, students, aka dreamers, I hate the word, but you know, it was a political tactic. You know, I identify as illegal because that's how the system portrays us. So um, after that, um, I mean, that was a national campaign. Um, I humanizing the stories of people that were in deportation proceedings is kind of like what I do now. I, I help people that are in deportation proceedings or in this case that have, that have been deported to come back to the country in a legal way or to actually keep families together. So that's one of the ways that I contributed uh, to the community. I organized a, a national crossing called the Bring Them Home Campaign, and it was 150 families that were previously deported. So that it took me for me to solve the board to go back to Mexico and challenge the immigration system, which is fucked up and it's broken. And then, okay, you know, we can hear we're still here, you know. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Christopher. I work with HF. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys. And your stories are so powerful, and I feel changed as a result. So thank you for sharing. And, I, and I'm really fascinated by uh, the concept of what you all have been saying, kind of talking about spirituality. And like you even said, I thank the Lord, thank God, and great kind of things for it. And as a black person, I think spirituality, religion, the church, God, Jesus, whatever, undergirds a lot of our strength in terms of being able to save lives through some of the things that we go through with black people. And I feel that maybe there's a connection there for Latino people um, that sometimes goes overlooked in the larger LGBT community. I'm wondering, do you feel that messages that relate back to looking at God are still relevant for messaging in terms of getting people to understand about the process of moving forward? And that a lot of it is just saying, I'm still here, and that through God, I was able to stabilize all of that. Is that relevant, do you think, today? In your personal life, and then to my um, former role at GLAD. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with atheists, actually, um, because I know that a lot of Latinos are very religious, specifically Christian, specifically a Catholic, and they're both growing and not a potential. It's, yeah, it's a really important frame to use um, religion in a way to connect with people. Um, in that, I mean, I obviously have had experience with that. I'm using the word even though we both share similar religious views. Um, but yeah, I mean, I put that as, I put, not on the side, but I, look, I want to connect with someone that gives me religion. Not because I'm religious, but I know that it's important to them. So I feel like that's still a very important frame to use when you're talking to LGBT issues, um, uh, you know, family, I think that they have spoken with me about it, and they know that I'm even an atheist, so they're, you know, they have our own discussions about that, but they feel like these are really important for them to get understand to so, so why they support LGBT people, why they're not people, or why, you know, they need to get a stand with you uh, for your human rights. The second one, I think it's everything. I think spirituality is what 
makes us human uh, and it exists in all kinds of forms. If we exist in this world, and you know, we can have you like that. The way I use it is like, you know, I would like to say, you know, it's the way to be and all these people and being a community. So, in order for us to connect this to the way that I have, we have to express it because when people pray, it's the way that you're being a human compassion and you're being a human. So, how can you really know? Somebody that is a bag and that it's illegal, that it's human. And I'm very, I have no problem with human, so that's my way of speaking because it's a truth. You don't get anything like that, it's like this is my truth. If people are able to connect to that, you know, like, 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 you So, the one thing that all, I, I read a research study, I don't know if you do that, I'm going to wait some of you. Um, so, like, this is probably one of the longer Q&As that we've had. This is good because it's a good conversation. So thank you all for being engaged. Um, the main thing that I, one of the things that I wanted to convey is that each and every one of you is on some sort of journey to find something, right? And that's one thing that all humans share. Um, I think that's one thing that all humans have in common in different cultures. Because you need to find some sort of higher consciousness, whether it's yourself or something. So I think. The conversation of spirituality in modern day media, um, media is very really right? It's about it's like finding yourself. Um, and so I think Catholics or Latinos tend to come from very Catholic backgrounds. Um, and so how to position that film um, is, is interesting. So I've done it through the New York Times. So it's really uh, here. So there's many ways of doing that. And I think it's to, to think. Actually, most Hollywood films have some sort of um, story arc, right? That's about like finding something. You know what I'm saying? Is that spiritual component that comes from it? So some sort of spiritual component to that shift people. So and there's ways. Uh, the story that I wrote in Baby Christ about. For the connection between the generations, and um, I have through social media, through the film festival submissions, uh, putting out, putting that the religious aspect out in, in, in public, really hasn't changed the dialogue. It really hasn't uh, moved sort of the needle for the film. Um, but I hope that when people watch it. For, um, for me, it's essential. I, I identify as a Catholic, and, um, you know, but the church doesn't accept who I am. Um, I, you know, I, don't, I don't really stick to the religion itself or the spirituality. Um, but I think it, it is important, I think, for the Latino community to really embrace all of the aspects of, of their consciousness, and that, that includes spirituality. I'm good. And first of all, my next off to you joining the Zoom. I learned a lot. But the question is, when you were doing your cancer for your therapy, it's missing something. I wonder if it's fictional or if it's a fictional woman. And we're speaking of community, and it seems to be a little male oriented. Is there a particular was that intentional, or what is the what what? Oh my God. I asked the same question. But <laughs> <laughs> five years ago, whenever it was, because I was like, well, why are we just focusing in on ourselves? Like I already had an issue dealing with the subject matter, but why is this? Why is it just about us? So his response was, because we need to tell our story, and I I found the truth. And when people ask me that question, um, I always throw it back on them. Well, why aren't you making a movie about yourself and your culture and where you come from? And I think um, in this digital age, you know, we have the capacity to pick up an iPhone and shoot a movie and do do something and put it on YouTube. I think <laughs> I think it's it's really important to be able to uh, make sure that we tell all stories and we we. You know, we've gone through several universities. We've, we've talked to several uh, young people, and 
encourage them to pick up a camera and tell a story. It's not impossible to make it. You know, it, it, it will take you a specific skill set to get it done, but um, you should do it. And everybody should do it. I think when we have this conversation with our audience, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that um, you know, need somebody to talk to about filmmaking, about getting your story told, you talk to me. I will inspire you to take the next step. And then you post it to YouTube, and, it's, and then the world is changing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pedro. Um, I'm, you know, it's like, you know, but um, I'm pretty amazed at the measurement of the and everything, the dates, and the entire dates, and everything. I work in the industry, and things like that, but it's hard when you guys are. Um, I think you work very well. You guys are working. Being, you know, telling stories, being, you know, like, I've seen a lot of shit out there, like, been through it all and everything, but seeing a video or seeing a movie that shows, like, everything from labeling to hanging out with unique gear, unique gear around it, it just comes around with, um, I guess you could say, religion, you know, we, like, pray to one another, like, be a part of, like, everybody's, like, like, or whatever, but the straight community already, like, labeled us for facts, sorry, you know, excuse but we're labeling each other now again, like tweets, you know, or whatever, like bears, cubs, otters, gorillas, which you may want to guess. But like, how do we take that away? What do you guys think? I don't know, that's off topic, but. <clears throat> about time, yeah, I think you're right, right? Like, that's something that, when it comes down to that, you know, it's like, and I would the, the, the question that the gentleman asked, you know, I feel like my plan has always been in the hood. My plan has always been in the farm field, you know. I didn't have to go to Rico to get all fucked up, you know. <laughs> the way Rico was <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, just as right, it was a riot, a kind of rights. You know, so we need to clean that back, you know, like we need to look at all the, the things that are happening in our community, gentrification, unemployment, you know, you know, low income families, people getting the problem, all the rooms are connected, you know, and it's a matter of how we to ourselves, you know. Responsibility because it doesn't get better. You know? <laughs> I just want to ask when you're playing stories that are in this movie, and the hype right now is sort of like post liberation for uh, LGBT. I mean, it's, it's, you know, marriage is, is spreading across the land, uh, you know. Um, uh, there's all representation, you know, in mainstream media, like, um, that, you know, Neil Patrick Harris is doing the Academy Awards, and, I mean, uh, it seems like that, um, it's almost like community itself doesn't want to look at the problems, the, the, the issues that they are I mean, they don't want to look at uh, poverty, they don't want to look at, at immigration status, they don't want to look at, at racism, the immigration and so when you're playing this film festival, I presume some of them were the LGBT festivals. I mean, how do you deal with the fact that people want a prettier picture? And they want to keep the rest. Well, I definitely want to thank uh, AHF for having us here because this is what we need to do. This is how we we make the change. This is how we bring up the topics of conversation um, that are being addressed in the media. And I think that, that when we have this presence, I mean, we're streaming, I think we're streaming, right? So like, other people are watching this. And I think that that, that conversation is is being, it's going to be great and after we meet here. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think as human beings, we don't want to look at the other side of life. But we want to you know, move, move forward and economic scale, we want to you know, live the American dream, those of us that live here in the United States. Um, and so the ugly side of things, you know, can you help with you mental health, um, specifically in our community, and I think that um, it's something that we need to continue talking about. I have this belief that the LGBT community is always going to be progressive, and it's always going to be community, and we're always going to be able to have that's what I love about being gay, is that we can 
talk about this and not we've already been stigmatized for so long that um, just bringing it up over dinner or with friends in this setting is so dynamic and so beautiful and, and i really appreciate appreciate that about our community so you know it's it's these venues that i think that create that community. how do we create that change outside of our community of public. Because these these you know, communities of public, so on the overall, and I think that's what Michael was asking, correct? Or not? In overall LGBT overarching, not, well, not just in, in the community, what I'm saying is we need to tell community of ours that you know young uh lesbians or young are really that their situation has not changed that much in Nebraska and in Iowa and or in East LA or in South LA or, or lots of places. I mean, that they're still they're still fighting for identity. They're still facing persecution, and you know, you know, uh, that's what we should be focused on. I just want to answer the question. Um, somebody described this film as uh, dual, often dueling identities, um, raw, visceral. I mean, these are the kind of reviews that I got. So it is a darker perspective of realities that we that we that we um that we're going through you know so i didn't know i was making that kind of film so to hear descriptions about it's like dual often yeah so that's the way i told my story and to paint a prettier picture would be to not be authentic so i think that's one thing that i needed to make sure that i, that I did was tell my real story so i don't think there's a way to really paint a prettier picture i um and I think, and I think it's important that we say it about authenticity, right? So it's like, and that moves people. That's why certain people are still are here and still here. No one got up and left, you know, to go to their Saturday, you know, next next space because there's there's something here. You like can't move away or whatever. Point being, <laughs> I feel like that would be rude. So we're almost done. I think. But let's, but you're here, and that's what that's what's important. So and yeah. Great question. So, no, I got confused. I was like, what do you mean, pretty picture? Not top picture. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the movie is very real and very authentic. I think it's very beautiful and it shows a part of the city that maybe some folks don't get to very often, but it's a very beautiful, rich part of the city. And another part of the answer to the question is this movie did not get into Outfest. And Jonah then turned around and created his own damn festival. And now those people were so threatened by it that they showed up and wanted a movie, etc. And if that film festival has not been two years in a row, it'll get bigger and bigger. And part of how you make the mainstream gay community recognize Latinos and people of color is by being out there and doing all the work and organizing and making the center acknowledges and not worrying about it when the center doesn't acknowledge us and doing our own film festival someplace else and, and doing the East LA if necessary and or, and or doing recognizing that there's all this sort of great culture happening on the east side as well. I just want out to say something. Okay. Um, I wanted to, when I first saw the movie, I thought, hey, where are the girls? But then I thought, okay, we have to tell the boy stories too. <laughs> 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 and I do love that you dedicated it to Jonathan Redder at the end, and for folks that don't know who she was, a fabulous historian and a great activist who died of cancer several years ago, and a close friend of mine. And I love that it ends with a recognition of her and book about her. She was just an amazing person. <laughs> Um, I, you guys know, you guys have drinks, Tim Brandy, they posted this for you, and I work with them, but as soon as I found out uh, what they were doing, because they're, they're always like really busy, and I found out what they were going to do, and I called her, and I said, Tim, yeah, uh, my wife and I are going. And the reason is, it's weird, because like if you had kids that came out, it would be fabulous, but my kids are all straight. <laughs> it just never but I'm one of those people that's on the other side of 40, the other side of 50, getting close to the other side of 60 now. But the question I have, I grew up in East LA in the Estrada Court, so that's, you know, if anybody knows East LA and you know where Sears is, 
I was right there. Yeah, yeah. So I lived in between all the gangs and stuff, and I dealt with it. Fast forward, I end up in the DJ, like in the late 70s, 80s. First of all, I'm going to be a super. I'm going to be a super. The funny thing is, the very first time I've seen millions of cholos, because they live everywhere. But the first time I saw a gay cholo dancing at circus, it freaked me out. <laughs> I'm like, how the hell can a cholo who scares me because his, his, everybody else is going to kill me because I looked at his sister dancing and making out with another guy on the dance floor? And I was like, that just it really fucked with my head. I was like, it wasn't that he was gay. It was that he was a gay cholo. <laughs> and I'm just, I, a question I have for you, because this was the thing that really tripped me out. Because of the machismo and the cholo and the whole gang culture. How did you deal with that part of it, with all your homies and stuff? It was hard, actually. It was hard because a lot of them turned their back against me. And growing up, I guess, especially in the hood, I wanted to fit in the life places, but I wanted to feel like, secure, so which I started like, hanging out with gang members because they were like, once they found out about me at the time of the period of years, uh, cause my brother had no idea. Groups and um, they all turned back and went to me, but I guess they made them realize that they were messing up, fucking up. Basically, our friendship was that uh, they recognized that I was always loyal to them. I always like was real with them. I never they not they don't dirty. Uh, they don't like you know like messed up with them with a friendship basically and. Uh, they, it took months for them to accept that they like had messed up on me. It took them like four, three, four months. Uh, they, I remember they called me back and they were like, you know, like, we apologize. Uh, we messed up. We want you to come to be back with us. And, you know, we want, we want to ask for forgiveness. Like, yeah, we, we were saying sorry because we messed up. We really messed up. We thought you were going to come at us in the wrong way, basically, just to be okay. We didn't know how to take the fact that you were okay, especially because you grew up with us for so many years, man. All of a sudden, you're gay, you know. So it was hard for them. As it was hard for me because I was just like, man, like coming out, I have to explain them ten thousand. They don't ten thousand questions, you know. They're they're asking questions, and I'm giving them back answers and so that. And it's like it's hard in both ends, you know, because they picture me as someone like macho or something, you know, and I'm really like a big queen. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> that um, I really want to be able to um, convey to the audience here today is that um, I think there's a lot of power to filmmaking and there's a lot of power um, that we individually have and we do that with our jobs. <clears throat> we do that with our families every day. We do that, um, we, 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 we are able-bodied, you know, um, and um, there's resources that we all have access to. Um, whether to host a party and get the party turned up, you know, as, as sponsors, um, whether it's, um, you know, access to the beautiful theater, thank you, 
to the people who are here from HF um, who helped um, make this possible today. Um, whether it's a magazine like Adelante Magazine that takes our stories as vehicles in print and writing and images. You know, we've been, we've been doing this already for so long. You know, um, like Nina Star, who um, is, is, is also been creating a lot of services. Um, small, smokehouse Restaurant, another sponsor. Um, a lot of us provided food. And so all of these resources put together create this event. And so what resources do you have that can shape and change the world around you? You know, so find people that are able to produce an event, if you're not able to do that, and uh, connect to people who are already doing things. I'm not the only filmmaker who is Latino. I'm not the only filmmaker who is doing things. Um, we have many others who are emerging, and the Latino demographic is huge. We are here. We are in major cities, and we're not in the mainstream media. And there's media, there's people here who are in the media, you know, represent us and tell our stories authentically. If you don't know how to do that, you can talk to me. Uh, or you can talk to anybody who um, has a story as well. You know, let them tell the story. You know? So it doesn't have to be a pretty picture. It doesn't have to be, you know, some, well, actually, it's authenticity. And, and I think if you can walk away today, um, you know, with some sort of story that you can tell, or our motivation to create some sort of change in the world, make it happen, you know. And, um, and if you lose the energy, or if you get burnt out, um, find the, the find somebody who can really um, support you. And I have a lot of support here in this room, and I, I'm very motivated <coughs> to create a lot of change. And I've been blessed to um, to be able to um, get this film and, and you know connect with people like I did, by the way, so I did, um, you know everything that has happened to me. So I'm grateful for everyone in this room for being here. Um, for the stuff that you're going to do, and uh, for HF for um, making this happen. I hope I didn't uh, forget any sponsors. That was my creative way of integrating those sponsors. I didn't finish watching the movie. I didn't that, but I definitely, you know, even speaking with them, you know, I connect with them, and it's particularly part of the person. This event allowed us, when I met with Michael probably in January, we started talking about how the Latino outreach on the stage was able to put it together. He, um, he asked me, you know, he picked my brain after he told and with everyone. And uh, he asked me, you know, he told me the only thing I have to do is to start with that. I don't care what the guy is, just start with that. And this was a perfect. This is our first activation, and this is our first way to do that. Um, so I think you guys are sure, and I think you guys are going to have fun. So I'm going to do it for fun, and I'm going to do it for fun. Thank you for coming.